going to look at this and, and then we will see the changing slide and hopefully I'll be able to change the slide while I still look at you. Okay. And um, well, I want to explain the title a bit. Okay. So, um, Theorema is obviously a word from the discourse of mathematics and of geometry, right? And then we say Santoto, I don't, need, I don't think I need to explain to this audience what this is Santoto means and this you know, period of very intense change and some of us remember personally and some of us have heard about it. Um, okay, and then um, the, the pa Pasolini, of course I don't have to introduce Pasolini, but then there is this math and map because in a way you know, mathematics and geometry are related and in a way, I feel that in this film, Pasolini is presenting both a mathematical equation, a theorem, but also a geographical map of how you get from point A and to point B. And, and then I bring to my interpretation of some Italian films the discourse of ecosexuality, which is very simple. I'm just going to give you just a few words, the ecology of love, and uh, also the idea that we as a species have become too disconnected from the metabolism of the earth and that this earth is really a partner we all share. One of the ideas of ecosexuality is that uh, if we imagine the earth as a lover, we may respect her a bit more rather than as a mother. So if we imagine the earth as a lover, then that's the partner we all share. It's as in Le Padre Ignoranti with uh, the Massimo, the guy in the middle, who was shared by both Antonio and uh, me. Okay, so uh, this explains a little bit. And here I want to show you, I can't indicate, yes I can. Okay, that's the actor Terence Stamp, and he is in this film the main factor that creates this change from a family, an ecosystem of people who live completely disconnected from the metabolism of the earth to this uh, uh, trajectory of heterosexual love where at least two of the members of the family really get to reconnect with this metabolism in a very profound way. And so that's Karen Staff. You will notice the fair skin, the auburn hair, and the blue eyes. To Italians of the 1960s, this would be connoted as a North European type. He's not the Tipo Pasolini. He's not Sergio Cinti or um, no, no, no. Okay. And then here I have I have two two the two characters that in the nuclear family uh, really arrive at this form of ecosexual love. And one is the father, who is also the owner of the factory, um, and. Um, he arrives at this uh, uh, communion with the earth in the form of the slopes, the lava slopes of Mount Etna, which at some point he embraces and has his heartbeat is very close to the heartbeat of the earth. And then uh, the other character is Emilia, who is actually the, the uh, housemaid, uh, played by Lara Betti. And she becomes this protector of the live soil. You have to remember that in the 60s, the periferia encroached on all the campagna, right? It was really an advancement. It was very, very fast. And the periferia covered everything in concrete. It killed the live soil. So she seats herself. She has herself buried in this live soil construction site. And that's the end of her trajectory of ecosexual love. So the other two elements that I have to bring in, and they apply to Ospetai, just as well as they apply to Pasolini, are sexual fluidity and amorous inclusiveness. How does this permutation happen? How does this transformation, how does this family transform in all these ages of ecosexual love? It's because a visitor arrives, and he's, his behavior is very fluid sexually. He loves the person, not the gender. The gender is irrelevant to him. And he's also very inclusive. He includes all the four members of the family and the maid. <laughs> so, and everyone is touched by this initiation that he performs. Okay, so the first uh, part of the ecosystem I want to present to you is the factory, right? This film is set in the land, uh, the heart of it. And you will notice the straight lines 
concrete, the rectangular forms, the disconnection from the metabolism of the earth. It's so dreary, right? So that's the first, first uh, element that the film presents to us. And then in contrast, we see the slopes of Mount Etna. A lot of people think this is the desert, they use gospel, they use Jesus and all that. You don't need that because this is actually a tonic uh, <laughs> element coming out of the volcano. And there is no, it's desert because it's lava. So, uh, and, and so it's, this is a very important element in the whole film. It serves as a backdrop. It serves as a suture sequence between the different narratives of the different characters in the film. And also <coughs> the multiple scenes. Symbol of silence, of loneliness, of depression, of isolation, and of incompatibility among humans. But initially, it is in the background. Then it becomes the partner we all share. In a, in a way, at the end, we understand that this earth is what brings them all together. It becomes the partner we all share. So from just background, the earth becomes a protagonist. And that's, of course, the ecosexual interpretation helps to see it that way. You don't have to agree with me. You can write all the articles you want. <laughs> Demolish my hypothesis, but I have to present it to you. OK, so here we see Paolo at the end of his journey. He is in, uh, in, the, in the desert, and he falls. And he's naked, and the earth is naked. And so there is that heartbeat, that synchronicity of heartbeat at that moment. And we also see Amelia again when she buries herself in the, in the swamp. And here we learn a little more about the visitor, who is this factor that causes, that ignites this change, OK? So what does it mean to experience a sacred ecosex? It is an experience of fluid, inclusive, pure, anonymous <coughs> sexual humor that functions as a sacred ritual for the initiated. And initially, what happens is they reconnect with their own inner ecosystem. They had become sort of inauthentic or disconnected from their own desires. And, and, and so that's the first reconnection that needs to happen before they reconnect with the earth as well. So the initiator is an anonymous, bisexual, and polyamorous visitor. For him, that's normal. And so he practices sexual fluidity and amorous inclusiveness. And I use this term from the time, Oedipal Syndrome, Deleuze's music, Lang uses all the alternative psychologists of the time. So the idea is that there is this myth that happiness is found in nuclear families that are organized around pater familias that are successful financially. So happiness resides there, according to this myth. But when you bust this myth, Oedipal syndrome myth, then you find out that happiness resides in art, in activism, in agency, and in self-invention. So that's what the initiation does for these uh, for these members of the family. And here I'm showing you a bit of a you know theorem mm -hmm. of how I have sort of charted this uh, this project that Pasolini has presented to us. So here you see that the earth is just the background, right? The lava of the slope. And there is this nuclear family, the, the husband, father, the wife, mother, the son, brother, and the daughter, sister. And I put Emilia, the housemaid, uh, you know, with those under the guardianship, so to speak, of the adults. And of course, according to the Oedipal Syndrome, the only side where there could be sexual energy is between the father and the, and the mother. That's supposedly how the children were born. But there is no sexual energy between these two. And it has been gone for a while. Mm -hmm. There is some energy between Pietro and Paolo, in the sense that Pietro still initially does aspire to maybe become like the father in a sort of Oedipal syndrome or ed you know, Oedipal uh, way that he would replace the father and become the owner of a factory like him. There is no energy between the mother and the daughter. They're very, very estranged from each other. So the visitor comes at the center of the family. He is not known. He is an anonymous person that has occurred, that has happened. Apparently, he visits many families this way. 
and he is able to really reactivate the energy field, the sexual energy field between, between himself and all these four, five people. He doesn't initiate in a way uh, they offer themselves to him. They open themselves up sexually and erotically and amorously to him. So he responds to their need, okay? But then uh, that's how the, the whole circulation of sexual energy with them is reactivated. And here I will briefly show you the five initiations. Because initially you have, we have these initiations. Then we have the parting when he leaves and everybody says, oh, okay. And then there are the activations, which is when each, uh, each person goes in their different directions. So very briefly, uh, with uh, Amelia, she was about to, she was breathing from the gas pipe, the suicidal attempt. So he grabs her and saves her, and then she lies down and she lifts her skirt. So he lowers the skirt and then lies on top of her. The camera is very discreet. We understand that there could be some, something that we call sex, but really it's more a response to these people's need for intimacy, for connection. So that's the first one. The second one is in Pietro's bedroom, the son. Obviously, the two boys are sharing the bedroom, which is normal for family families, especially at that time. And the visitor is more of a young man, but he is fully grown adult. Whereas Pietro, Pietro is still a bit of an adolescent, so Pietro starts looking at the visitor. Then the visitor sleeps, and, and Pietro lifts the sheet. And so the visitor wakes up. And instead of being upset or anything, he moves, simply moves in the bed with Pietro. And that's all we see. Clearly, you know, we're in 1968, very homophobic Italy. Paisolini is taking big risks with this film, so he doesn't want to go, you know, push the envelope too much. Then there's Lucia. Here we have elements of voyeurism and fetishism. Uh, she's in the sunroom, and the, the visitor's clothing is strewn across the room. So she touches the clothing, and she looks at the clothing. She gets turned on. So she just rolls. We don't see anything, just the neck or the back or the shoulders. But we understand that she just rolls for him, and then he comes in, and there is a bit of a sensual scene between the visitor and the chia. And then what happens is that the father tries to have sex with the mother, but she turns him off, and she turns him off. And then the father gets ill, and the visitor heals him. So then the daughter, who is very young, she might be 13 or something, uh, st starts to trust the visitor. So then she opens her herself to him. She invites him to her bedroom. And then last, of course, is the initiation of the father, Paolo. Okay. And if you remember, you know, in Rome, there were areas where public sex happened in those years. It was very common. And there were certain areas, we came out there, frate. <laughs> okay. So there were some frate where you would find men who would meet other men. And there were some frate where it was different. So evidently, so Paolo and the visitor go on a day trip in the car, and they get to one of these areas, and that's where Paolo's initiation uh, habits, of course, we don't see anything. Okay, so all these changes, uh, you know, we get, we get from point A to point B, where the earth is now the central force in the diegesis. Okay, so, and we see this, and I put that central image right there, you seduced me, God. Obviously, we're in Italy, people don't have words for the divine other than what they've learned from the Vatican. And so that's God, but it could be very well an earth goddess because really what is central is this tonic force of the lava of Mount Etna. So for Lucia and for Pietro, there is a they seek agency and self-expression. Mm -hmm. Lucia seeks agency by doing exactly what Pasolini did when he went out for sex. Mm -hmm. He would look for somebody <laughs> and you know pick them up and then have sex. And that was one of the time. And, um, and have fun. She has fun, she has agency, she experiences uh, joy and uh, pleasure outside of her conjugal bed, bed. And once is in, in an apartment, and here is in a ditch, an anafrata. So it's very ecological. She's having sex in the, in the fields. Uh, for uh, Pietro, the, the 
the trajectory is a bit different. Instead of, he decides he's not going to be the owner of another factory, but rather a minimalist painting. And that's where his trajectory ends. With Paolo, we've seen where it ends, but I will tell you a little more later. And with Emilia, it's this perfection of the fertile soil on the construction site. Okay, there is a victim, of course. The victim is Odetta. Odetta is the young daughter. And obviously, according to the Oedipal Syndrome mentality, she would have been the proper person to become you know, amorously engaged with the visitor. So when he leaves, she's very bereft. She feels she trusted the wrong person, the wrong system. And so then she becomes catatonic, and actually she's whisked away because, remember, another theme of the time was how to deal with mental illness in a way that isn't criminalization of the, of the victim, right? So, and it's interesting that Pasolini is aware of the violence of this change because remember when history accelerates, change is rapid and violent and it has its victim. One of them was Pasolini because he never lived to see a time where you know, people of the same gender could love each other openly, where there was respect for, for these forms of love. Okay. So, okay, now I want to bring in Deleuze. Okay, Deleuze, the two ideas of time image and movement image. I think this is a key concept to really understand this film, at least according to my perspective. Why? Because it starts, first you see the factory, then you see that the media is very preoccupied, very intent in figuring out why the fact this factory has been donated to the workers. Now, in, in 1968, many people chose to repudiate their class. It wasn't uncommon, right? People would say, I'm a bourgeois, but I don't want to be a bourgeois. I want to be a hippie. OK, so uh, the media say, you know, we have to figure out and ask the workers why this factory was donated to them. Of course, the workers don't know. They don't never own the factory, and they don't know why it was donated to them. Right? But the media think that, that they should know. And so this is really the only, uh, this extra diegetic scene, because it happens before the story begins, is actually the only movement image sequence. The rest is what Pasolini imagines that would have led to this donation. OK? So um, see, the, the journalist says, can you respond to these questions? Can you respond to these questions? And that one of the workers said, I don't want to answer. It's not my responsibility. And so there's this transition. You will see it. This is just the way it is, right? So where Pasolini says, well, maybe I can answer the question. Right? Maybe I can address this question. And he uses his experience as a client in the male sex trade scene of Rome. And also his experience as an initiatory teacher. These are very, two very important points of Pasolini's biography that come into play in this film. The visitor, in a way, he only sleeps with people once, which is exactly what Pasolini did, because it's an initiatory ritual. And once the, the, the sort of the energy of ecosexual love has been awakened, <coughs> then there is no need to continue that. But there is a need to move to, move to another site where, where this energy is dead to, emit, to ignite that force again. So, uh, and also as an initiatory teacher, remember that Pasolini was expelled by the school of the, school of the public schools of Italy because he was an initiatory teacher. I'm not saying, I'm not approving or disapproving of what caused the scandal, but he was an initiatory teacher. And the way he makes films is again initiatory. In fact, many people who became part of his family were initially encountered in one of these encounters. <laughs> and that includes Ineto Davoli and Sergio Cipi and I don't know who else. So here is Pasolini that now brings you into his move in time image. Time image, according to Deleuze, is when film looks at, at the inner reality. Okay, Like the camera is not focused on what's out there, but rather on the inner processes. So, Pasolini, who 
against the lava of Mount Etna tells you, okay, prepare Paolo Pasolini. I'll give you the theorem. I will disclose to you the equation that led to this donation. I won't be able to finish this because we are already a little short of time, and I do want to leave time for questions. So when we enter the diegesis, we have these three phases, the initiations, the parting, and then the activation. And at the end of that, we have the solution to the equation. Nobody wants the factory. The factory has been donated because nobody wants it. And so that explains that series of facts that initially were presented. And I skipped some of the initiations, but I get to Paolo's initiation. You see that when Paolo becomes initiated, that's when the earth appears. And Paolo's consciousness really changes because he feels now the way a marginalized homosexual would have felt at the time of Pasolini. Laughing stock, somebody who was abandoned by all his friends, somebody who was expelled from the Communist Party, and so on. So you're taking me by force. At the same time, this pleasure is so profound, this connection with a person who is like you, who has plumbing that you have, put it that way, is so powerful that he doesn't care. Um, and so this is all the Paolo's initiation, how the earth really becomes very important. Okay, so when Paolo has been initiated, clearly the Oedipal syndrome has been busted because now the pater familias doesn't want any of the status, right? So Mineto Davoli comes back, he's the angel, the, the messenger, and says, well, the visitor is leaving now. And so then there is the parting, and Pietro is the first one who parts and says, you know, uh, the awareness of losing you has become the awareness of my being different. Mm -hmm. And then Lucia, actually, she says, you know, you, you know, haven't destroyed anything because my life was empty. It was one of those signore, of, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Odetta actually is very concerned because she says, how can I replace you? And obviously, she is already in that victim path. And then Pietro says, you simply destroyed the idea I've always had of myself. Okay, uh, I want to finish with <coughs> four, so I'm, I'm gonna go a little fast here. This is oh, this is Odetta's sequence. Odetta becomes catatonic. She touches this image of the, of the visitor and then freezes. And then you can see how Western medicine had no idea how to deal with mental illness, Nobody really takes even compassion on her, and then the paradigm is fine, and they take her away. And this is the activation of Lucia. She has her mini Morris, like the signore of the time, and she goes and picks up guys. This is her first foray, and she's quite successful, and she's kind of enjoying it. And you see Pasolini's gait. Pasolini, the male body, is always what there is to be look, to look at, according, you know, Conscious with our movies theory, of course. And then this is her second foray where there's actually a guy who is watching because she's having, you know, she's like, she's having sex with this guy in the ditch, but there's some, there has to be somebody watching. And then this is Pietro, who gets on this existentially strip, the minimalist, the artist who is a loser but nobody should know, and so on. And then he moves, and he moves to his own studio, and then that's how he ends up with that painting whose color has the same color as the eyes of the visitor. And then uh, Emilia, very inter interesting trajectory. She goes back to her hometown, but she doesn't really enter uh, any room. She sits on the bench outside of the, of the barn, as you see her there. She takes this liminal position out there. And of course, uh, the people of the village are very different. They, they aggregate. They express affection, love, um, and so they start getting curious. Um, and then they think, well, well, she must be a saint or maybe a witch. So this father brings this child that has this skin disease, and of course she heals it. And then, of course, they, now they are persuaded that she is a saint and a witch, because in popular vernacular religion, those can be the same. And then, uh, of course, they want to feed her, here in Italy, remember. And so she refuses the food. 
but wants to have a witch's brew made from nettles. So the children of the town go and harvest the nettles, and then they make the brew, and then she eats it. And at that point, here you have suspension of disbelief. Remember, Pasolini was an atheist, but he believed in some forms of natural religion. So here you have this woman who levitates on top of the roof. And of course, the whole village now is super persuaded that she is both a witch and a saint. And uh, so that brings back the divine feminine, by the way, which is very important in monotheistic belief systems, you know, that exclude the divine feminine. So at that point, Amelia is ready for her action, sexual activism. And she recruits this older woman of the town, who is Susanna Pasolini, this is Pasolini's mother, for this act, for this action. And so they go toward the periferia. Okay, you see them walk through this rural landscape until they get to this threshold. If you look at that left image, I don't know how well you can see it, but this is still rural, the pre-industrial Italy. Then you cross this road, and there is a periphery is coming. It's encroaching, okay? So Amelia looks at it and says, I have to get myself buried there in this construction site because the soil is still alive and maybe I can save it from concrete. And so then Susanna does that for her, Susanna Pasolini, and then you see Amelia there, she's buried and she's crying. And she says that from this uh, little lake that forms itself at, the, at her side, uh, her, her eyes, I don't know how well you can see these images, uh, it's not a spring of pain, but a spring, uh, you know, it's the well of a new spring. So this is very heterosexual. In fact, one of the things that the sexuals do is they make a performance with a bed full of dirt, and then they they play in this dirt. So it's a way to resacralize soil, which we always often consider something dirty. Okay, and this is power. And of course, this is where the teacher would say. Come voleva si dimostrare, right? Paolo says, what would happen if I decided to strip myself of everything and give my factory to the workers? Mm -hmm. So Pasolini has, you know, given you the answer. Okay, and there is a little more. And so then Paolo starts doing what, uh, what people, what, remember that on the scene of, of like, male sex 